All right, so Home Assistant 2025.10's beta release has just been pushed out. Here's an overview of the changes this month. As usual, it's a beta, so not everything is guaranteed for the final release, but most of the time, everything makes it in. Home Assistant Voice now officially supports two keywords at the same time. Hey, Jarvis. Turn off the living room lights. Turn off the light. Hey, Mycroft. Turn on the living room lights. Turn on the light. I can see this being kind of useful if you have both your local processing and you also have like a cloud processing as, you know, a backup. You could use one for the local processing and the other for the cloud processing. I think this will be a really useful feature though in multilingual households where you can have one wake word be for, let's say, English, and then another wake word be for something like Spanish. Hey, Jarvis. Turn on the living room lights. Turn on the light. Hey, Mycroft. Apaga las luces de la sala. Now, if you noticed in that last example, it beeped at me instead of repeating the instruction back to me. And that's a new feature in this release, is that if the Home Assistant voice and the entity it's controlling are both in the same room as specified in Home Assistant, it won't repeat the instruction back to you. So if your Home Assistant voice is in the bedroom, but you were controlling the lights in the living room, it would then repeat the instruction back to you. Turn off the light. But if the voice and the lights are in the same room, like they're both in the living room, it will just emit a quick beep at you to let you know that it heard you. It was kind of redundant before. If you're in the room and you're watching the lights turn off, you don't need to be told again that the lights were turned off because you could just watch it. The automation editor has gotten some good updates again, similar to last month. The sidebar, which was added in 2025.9, has gotten another update this month that allows you to click and hold to resize the sidebar. Certain complicated automations we kind of stretch the limits of the length depending on your monitor size and how large your automation was. Keyboard shortcuts for pasting and undoing and redoing actions have been added to the automations editor. This is pretty nice. So if you make a mistake, instead of having to like back out of the automation and then go back into the automation for it to reset, you can just hit Control Z to undo, or you can go up to the menu and press undo, and then similar for redo and then for pasting. But one thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that where you try to paste or do these other keyboard actions actually affects the result. So if you have an element selected, let's say in the action section, and you copy and paste it, it will then copy and paste in that section. But if you don't have anything selected and you just try and copy and paste in the automations box directly, it'll copy and paste the whole section instead of just that one element. So you wanna be careful about where you actually try to do some of those keyboard shortcuts. And the cool thing is that it supports remembering up to 75 different actions. So if you needed to revert back to something from 30 steps ago, you'd be able to do so. Now, if you remember the repeat action, in previous versions of Home Assistant, it would just be one action that you would then have to toggle separately based on what type of repeat block you wanted. Well, in this release, Home Assistant has made those four separate actions, which makes it much clearer on which one you're actually using in your automations. The previous way was trying to do too much in one action, so splitting them up makes it easier to keep track of. Oh, and they also brought back the overflow editor box to all of the automation elements in addition to the sidebar. The template and YAML editor has gotten a few nice updates. It now shows line numbers on the side, and it also has an undo and redo section up at the very top, similar to what the automation editor did. It's good to see that the template editor getting some love. Now, a few releases ago, Home Assistant created what was called a home dashboard. This was a smarter dashboard that would analyze your entire Home Assistant instance and then recognize certain areas or categories of devices and then bundle them into one section based on what your home looked like. In this release, they're updating the home dashboard to show a commonly used devices section up near the top. It currently only looks for things you've used in the past day, but I wouldn't be surprised if they made it configurable in the future. If someone had commonly used something over the past week or month, maybe, it would make sense for it to 
show up on the commonly used section, even though it may not have been used within the last day or two. And in 2025.8, Home Assistant added the AI task integration, which allowed you to query AI services like ChatGPT and then receive a response back and then do something with that response. In this release, they've added the ability to do the same thing, but for images instead. So you can query an AI service that generates images and then you can get that image back down and then do something with it. This could be useful in certain circumstances and I'm interested in seeing how it's developed, but personally, I probably won't be using this feature that much, if at all. I just don't really see a need for it for any of my automations. Let me know if you're actually gonna use this feature or whether you're just planning on skipping it entirely and holding out for something better. When it comes to noteworthy improvements, there are actually quite a few this month. The Fill 2 integration was updated to support the, the new Hue Bridge Pro. This allows you to have motion aware based on your Philips Hue bulbs if they support it. Motion aware is the motion tracking that Philips Hue has added to their light bulbs, which is never a sentence I thought I would say. Motion tracking and light bulbs, crazy. But they're out there. We'll have to see how good they are. If you are using them, and you want to use them in Home Assistant, now the integration supports it. The AccuWeather integration gets hourly forecasts now. The RealLink integration keeps getting updates, so that's great to see. The Shelly and Tuya integration have gotten a fair amount of updates exposing more sensors than what they did in the past. So if you use either of those two, check out the full list of features below. And for Lutron Cassida users, the switches that have multi-tap support can now be used directly in Home Assistant. Now on the topic of switches, you might be wondering whether it makes more sense for you to use smart switches or smart bulbs in your smart home. In this next video, I share the top three reasons why I think smart home beginners should use switches instead of bulbs. And I'll see you in the next one.